Today we will discuss about the mandibular nerve. But before discussing about the mandibular nerve, let's make few important mentions about the trigeminal nerve. As you can see, on this diagram I have also indicated a longitudinal section through the brainstem, where using the yellow color I have indicated the sensory nuclei of the trigeminal system and those are the mesencephalic nucleus, the principal pontine nucleus and the spinal trigeminal nucleus. Also using the brown color I have indicated the motor nucleus of the trigeminal nerve or the masticatory nucleus. The large sensory root and the small motor root of the fifth nerve arise from the lateral pontine region where the fibers pass through the brachium pontis. It is the sensory root that bears the large trigeminal ganglion, the equivalent of the dorsal root ganglion of a spinal nerve, from which the three great branches of the nerve arise. The motor root blends neither with the sensory root nor with the ganglion, but passes deep to the ganglion to accompany the mandibular division and join this just outside the foramen ovale. The mandibular nerve, as it leaves the skull through the foramen ovale, consists of two rootlets, a large laterally lying sensory one, which contains fibers derived from the trigeminal ganglion, and the medial motor root, which is the direct continuation of the motor root of the trigeminal and is much smaller. As these two parts emerge through the foramen ovale, in intimate contact, they unite to form the mandibular nerve, which is a very short trunk that soon after it exits through the foramen ovale, splits up into an anterior and a posterior division. Outside the skull, medially to the mandibular nerve, the otic ganglion is located. I have indicated the otic ganglion using the green color. I've already mentioned that the mandibular nerve will split into two divisions, an anterior division and a posterior division. Now let's discuss the branches from each of these divisions. And we'll start with the anterior division of the mandibular nerve. This division gives off the following branches. As you can see, I have already indicated the deep temporal nerves, which can be two or three in number. Those nerves will innervate the temporalis muscle. The buccal nerve contains all the sensory fibers from the anterior division of the mandibular nerve. And this nerve will innervate the skin and the mucous membrane related to the chin. Another branch from the anterior division is the nerve to lateral pterygoid. This nerve will innervate the lateral pterygoid muscle. The last branch from the anterior division is the masseteric nerve and as its name says this nerve will innervate the masseteric muscle. Before discussing about the branches from the posterior division of the mandibular nerve we will put the branches from the main trunk of the mandibular nerve. Two branches arise from the main trunk. A sensory branch which is the nervus spinosus that it takes a recurrent course to enter the cranial cavity through foramen spinosum together with the meningeal artery and supplies the dura mater of the middle cranial fossa. Nerve to medial pterygoid is the other branch from the main trunk and is a motor branch. It is closely related to the otic ganglion, traverses through the ganglion and supplies the medial pterygoid from its deep aspect. In addition to medial pterygoid, it also supplies tensor palati and tensor tympani muscles. Now we are in a position to describe the branches from the posterior division of the mandibular nerve and I will indicate those branches using the orange color. In contrast to the anterior division of the mandibular nerve, the posterior division is mainly sensory and it contains only few motor fibers. The posterior division gives off three branches. 
and first to indicate is the lingual nerve. The lingual nerve is the smaller terminal branch of the posterior division of the mandibular nerve. It is sensory to the mucous membrane of the anterior two-third of the tongue. This nerve winds round the submandibular duct, first above, then lateral, then below, and finally medial to the duct, and divides into its terminal branches. Its distribution provides sensory supply to the floor of mouth, lingual surface of the gum, and anterior two-third of the tongue. It also carries preganglionic secretomotor fibers to submandibular and sublingual salivary glands. Those fibers will indicate later. For now, I'll indicate using the green color just the submandibular ganglion, which is a parasympathetic ganglion connected with the lingual nerve. The inferior alveolar nerve. It is the larger terminal branch of the posterior division of the mandibular nerve. It is a mixed nerve and receives all the motor fibers of the posterior division of the mandibular nerve. This nerve will enter the mandibular foramen in company with inferior alveolar artery, traverses the mandibular canal as far as the mental foramen where it terminates by dividing into mental and incisive branches. As you can see, the mental nerve emerges out through mental foramen to supply skin of the chin and skin and mucous membrane of the lower lip. The incisive branch supplies canine and incisor teeth, carrying all the motor fibers from the posterior division of the mandibular nerve is the mylohyoid nerve. This nerve arises from the inferior alveolar nerve before it enters the mandibular canal. It supplies mylohyoid and anterior belly of digastric muscle. The last branch to indicate from the posterior division of the mandibular nerve is the auriculotemporal nerve. This nerve arises by two roots, which after encircling the middle meningeal artery unite to form the single trunk. It runs backwards medially to the neck of the mandible Behind the neck of the mandible, it turns upwards and ascends over the root of zygoma to enter the temple behind the superficial temporal vessels. As you can observe, I'm indicating using the red color, the middle meningeal artery. The middle meningeal artery is encircled by the roots of the auriculotemporal nerve. The auriculotemporal nerve is a sensory nerve and it gives off sensory branches. Those branches are auricular branches, articular branches that supply the temporal mandibular joint, and superficial temporal branches, which will supply the skin of the temple. To conclude this video, we will indicate the parasympathetic fibers that will provide secretomotor innervation to the salivary glands, the parotid, submandibular, and sublingual. And we will start with the secretomotor innervation of the parotid gland. As you can see, I have indicated the glossopharyngeal nerve as it emerges from the medulla. And inferiorly, I have indicated the two ganglions of the glossopharyngeal nerve, the superior ganglion and the inferior ganglion, using the blue color on the diagram with the brainstem, I have indicated the inferior salivatory nucleus located at the level of the medulla. The glossopharyngeal nerve carries the parasympathetic preganglionic fibers which are originating in the inferior salivatory nucleus. Those fibers will leave the glossopharyngeal nerve at the level of its inferior ganglion and will travel along with the tympanic nerve. The tympanic nerve arises from the inferior ganglion of glossopharyngeum and ascends to the tympanic cavity through a small canal, the inferior tympanic canaliculus. In the tympanic cavity, divides into branches which form the tympanic plexus. From the tympanic plexus, parasympathetic secretory fibers continue as the lesser petrosal nerve, which will enter the otic ganglion. Here, 
the preganglionic fibers will synapse with the postganglionic neurons. From the otic ganglion, the parasympathetic postganglionic fibers will pass to the auriculotemporal nerve via communicating branches. Further, from the auriculotemporal nerve, the parasympathetic fibers will reach the parotid gland. Now, we will discuss about the parasympathetic innervation to the submandibular and sublingual salivary glands. Those fibers are originating in the superior salivatory nucleus, located in the pons. The preganglionic parasympathetic fibers take the root of nervus intermedius, and at the level of the geniculate ganglion, some of the parasympathetic fibers will continue along with the facial nerve. Then, at the level of the middle ear, the preganglionic parasympathetic fibers will pass to the corda tympani nerve, which branches from the facial nerve. The corda tympani nerve will anastomose with the lingual nerve. Thus, the preganglionic parasympathetic fibers will reach the lingual nerve. And from this nerve, the fibers will arrive to the submandibular ganglion. In the submandibular ganglion, the preganglionic fibers synapse with the postganglionic neurons. And from those neurons, located in the ganglion, the parasympathetic postganglionic fibers will go to the submandibular and sublingual glands. That's all for today. I hope this video was useful for you. See you next time. Bye.